Hey guys, Luna here, and we are back with Hive Swap Frenson. We last left off, we met a young Jade Blood just wanting to explore the world and just see what's really like out on the surface since she hadn't really explained seen it that much. We now only have three volumes left volume 16 through 18. And in this one, we're going to go into volume 16 of Cult and Captaination. Captaination or Captivation? Or something like that. Anyways, let's get right into it. You, c you crash landed on Ontario 16 long episodes ago, and sometimes you feel like you've been here forever. You've had many adventures and met many Artarians, some, all, and none of whom you have become your friends. But for na but now, for some reason, you have had a hunch that you're near the end of your Artarian travels. For one thing, you seem to be coming to the edge of the populated region you've been walking through all the time you've been here. For another, the intense craving that animated you throughout your journey feels like it might be waning. It's not quite gone, but it feels like a dinner who, diner who's stuffed himself to bursting, but is still seeking that last sweet morsel that will make his meal complete. You're still on the prowl for that very, the very sweetest morsel of friendship. So we have Frosio Velvis and Marcus Sotoloto, a rust of blood and a purple of blood. Clown, very interesting look, and... It looks so silly and adorable. I love I love the little intro card he has. It's very lovely. But for now I'm going to I shall write down their names for our cards. So Foz Irvel and Rustblood. And the Marcus uh Slotto, like Slotto. Very unusual names, but we shall get right into it. So, uh, purple blood. It's interesting that there isn't any fuchsia bloods, but I suppose that's only because they are few and far between. Or at least we've only seen three, so. Anyways, what's your Veldvis, the rest blood? It has turned foggy, and you can't see far in any direction, but you seem to be surrounded on uh, on every side by bare ground, hummocked and pitied, almost like a weird abstract sculpture and covered with greenish mosh. Based on your experiences you've had with Artarian flora, you imagine the moss is probably poisonous, acidic, explosive, or something of that nature. Wouldn't be surprised, because of... <laughs> Suddenly, a shadow looms out from the darkness, making you jump, but it's only leaning a, a leaning signpost. As you move closer, you can see that the sign says, Welcome to a Happy Accidents Pit Park. Before you can figure out what that might be, you hear a voice muttering to itself in the fog, and it sounds like a dirt being shoveled. Shovel, shovel, toil, and shovel, low bloods of the world, unite. Uh, that does not sound nice. You move cautiously toward the voice until the figure of the troll emerges from the fog. He seems to be digging in the hard bare ground. There is a tide of the vast trolls which are taken at the flood leads at the on the where workers paradise. You clear your throat and the troll turns swiftly. Who's there? Who there, I say? Oh, this reminds me of just like a play. You announce soothingly that you're just a poor wayfaring stranger. Not a ghost or any nonsense like that. Confirm that you are not. Good, because I do not believe in them. I am a dialectical materialist. Well, if you are not a ghost, who are you? You explain you are a humble alien to recently, well, not so recently, landed, well, crash, on a terrier, and who's been looking ever f and looking ever since for here, you blushingly trail off into a mumble. The troll snores and comes close to study you. His breath is not the fresh for of the freshest. It's, I mean, can't really blame when we can't don't probably don't have much hygiene care. 
Well, you are the color of cheese, but it could be makeup. You could be a high blood in disguise. Come to watch poor little Foisier of Vestler pushing his humble profession of pit perturba for some unknown reason of your own. Which, I mean, not, not surprising. Crosser rubs, uh, rubs up the exposed skin of your arm to see if the makeup will come off. It doesn't, but he still seems suspicious. A real alien would know what outer space is like. Describe outer space to me. You describe attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion, and watching sea beams glitter in the dark near the Dahashin Gate. You express the belief that all of these moments will be lost in time like tears and rain. These authentic uh, depictions seem to satisfy Fulzer. He nods his head to see and seems to think. He doesn't appear to be a fast thinker. Finally, he seems to have an idea. Do the cheese entities where you're from have a strong cons consensusness of class struggle? You have no idea what he's talking about, but you were always good at guessing the right answer on multiple choice tests. Which, uh, I'm assuming he casts a sum. You sure him from have such a strong consciousness of class struggle that they use it to jack up their cars when they get flat tires. A big smile overspreads Fazio's face and he pumps a fist into the air. Pleased to meet you, com uh, comrade alien. All power to the workers. I imagine that the finding me performing the honest labor of the working class makes you feel right at home. You assure him that it does. Uh, sh yeah, sure, okay, uh, let let's go with that. I'm sure we're just totally not guessing. I suppose that you, you wish you could share in the simple Paterian joys and sorrows of the Italian oppressed classes. You're not sure what Paterian means, but sharing joys and sorrows sound like a hopeful prelude to friendship, so you say that you were just thinking that you would like to share that kind of joys and sorrows. Easily done, comrade. Here, take this soil uh, per uh, per tra sh per run land. You can enter it into solidarity with the Italian working class right now. No, don't thank me. Freedom, brotherhood, and equality is my motto. Conduct your perturbations right here, if you please. Uh, sure. Okay. Sure, okay. Let's go with that. And I'm totally not... He points to where he's shoveling, and you begin to shovel there, too. The moss that covers the ground is tough as leather, and the Artarian soil is rocky, hard, and unforgiving. No surprise there, and before long you're sweating profusely, but no exertion is too great for the pursuit of friendship. Prozier watches you labor brotherly with brotherly satisfaction. Class solidarity is a wonderful thing. From each according to his ability, to each according to his need. You look like a walking cheese, but your muscular development is impressive. So just to pass the time while you label in solidarity, what do you think of our planet? What has been your impression of it on your visit from outer space? Um, speed, as always. You suppose it's no worse than a lot of places with some good points and some bad. As I guess, it's only polite to, to say nice things about your host home planet. Besides, meeting Frozer has stoked your desire for a sweet friendship morsel, and a little praise and flattery often go a long way to make people like you. So with a little breath in your s you have to spare from your digging, you tell Frozer that you found Altera most interesting. The fierce rush of life here in Produces a solitary wakefulness and boredom is virtually unknown. Which, I mean, I guess it's not wrong. Also, the social structure arising from the hemo spectrum and multi dimensional relationship matrix is very unusual, producing a fantastic array of possible interactions among people. You're looking forward to the day when you can tell your grandchildren about it. But Frosso doesn't look as pleased as you hope. See, fine, Ateria agrees with you. Oh yes, very much, you paint. You find it interesting and fascinating. Definitely. To you, the spectacle of those who happen to have been born with a certain blood color, exploiting and oppressing those who have not, is just a pi picturesque detail. Well, you wouldn't go f so far as to find nothing objectable in a society where a strong kill the weak at will based on nothing more than the color of, their bo of a bodily fluid. 
see the low as little more than inanimate objects whose only purpose is to serve them. Uh, yeah, I should have known where this was going, but... Where are the whole concept society structured solely to breed cannon fodder for the Aesekotic Emperor's mad plan to conquer the entire galaxy, more people to oppress? That certainly wasn't what you were. While the streets run rust, orange, and gold blood, you stand uncertainly and remark how interesting and fascinating our Terminator is. While the fish people and their bluish lackey strike the pop pop from their mouth and of low blood wigglers, you smile pleasantly and remark how well, unusual Atelier is. Certainly not, but you can't judge other cultures by one owns. Oh, you can't dodge your class that's your class responsibilities that way, you cur. You so called intellectuals try to hide your fa fawning servility to the bosses by pretending to view society objectively without more judgment, when all the time you're simply crypto imperialistic lapdogs. But and you come to the happy absent pit parks, pretending solidarity with the oppressed. Psha! I see now that you're nothing but a cat's paw of the opp oppressor's class. Uh, no, that's not the point I was hoping to get across, but fine if you say so. Nothing but a cheese colored Judas is sent as a spy, traitor, bootlicker, secular plant, murderer, monopolitist. Profiteer, slave trader, cannibal, parasite, technocat, gangster, ectoplasm. No, no, you try to. It's a shovel from you and turns away. Turncoat, a narc, a double crosser, weasel, a hijacker, vulture, fishagoth, breathalyzer. You watch his back recede into the fog, your heart sinking with the wreck of your hopes and dreams for friendship. Game over. <laughs> It's by far the worst place you've ever seen or heard of. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's definitely pretty bad. The feeling comes over you suddenly then the, nothing can be more important than the truth. Truth is at the foundation of all real friendships. Truth sets you free. Honesty is the best policy. So you take a deep breath and say that you hope you won't give an offense, but that in your opinion, Arteria is the nastiest, ugliest, and most inhospitable and most unfair place that you've ever seen of or in a long life of travel and study. Even the planets are bloodthirsty. Even the soil is hard and mean. You ma made some, many, or no friends. Yeah, but you heard it's also possible to make friends with lions, bears, killer whales, and other wild and dangerous creatures. In fact, often here on Ateria, you felt that you've been locked in a cage with a bunch of such wild, dangerous creatures. And you've talked, you've been watching Frozer anxiously for sign of anger. You're surprised to see that said he seems to be loving it. And what about our political system? You've already put a foot in it, so you go ahead and put the other one in too, which is very much true. <laughs> you express the opinion that a violent, rigidly shredded, street, indestructible social structure created solely to generate soldiers for a mad project to conquer the entire galaxy might raise eyebrows in some quarters. You admire natural selection and survival of the fittest as much as the next person, but this is overkill on a titanic scale. As you've been speaking, Frazier's smile has grown wider and wider, and he's shown other signs of approval, such as jumping up and down and whirling around. He pumps his fists up into the air. For it to perfect a social- It's so good to talk about- uh, to talk with someone who hasn't been hypnotized from Wigglehood with contra-revolutionary contra pap. Someone who sees condition on the terrier for what they really are. Who sees the evil of the high bloods. Someone who will march in vanguards of the workers' revolution to face unflinching, unflinchingly the onslaught of the atrocity. Perhaps, nay, probably, to die in the hail of bullets, but never turn their back on the people. Oh, um... Uh, let me embrace you, comrade alien. Uh, sh sure, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. sure. Just do what you desire, but uh, I honestly don't know what to say at this point. He does so. He's oily and smells like mossy soil and poor ooze, but this is not dampen your spirits. What better preamble for making a suggestion of friendship? Agreeing with people about politics never fails to bring friendship closer. But before you can... 
Uh, but before you can bring it up, Frosty having first kissed you both on both cheeks continues. But we mustn't allow our celebration of the people's revolution to interfere with the honest labor that en ennobles us. I am holding you back from your ticket to the workers' paradise. Sure, I suppose? Please proceed with your soil per penetration. All power to the people. Death to the arbitrary homospectral discrimination. Follow the comrade. He waves his hand with a flourish and you start digging again. I wonder if it would be at just as revolutionary if you traded places so Frozo could do the digging and you could do the speechifying, but you don't wish to disturb the perfect harmony now existing between the two of you. Said, use your little available breath to inquire what all the soil perturbation is in aid of. Why, a culprit, of course. Don't, didn't you see the sign? This is the happy absent pit park of Frozo. Busy proprietor, a tears recreational tradition is to pull, put a dig coal pits everywhere without a second thought. But our revolutionary future demands that we have more respect for the dead, so I have created this wonderful innovation, the pit park. There is a clown concert being held not far from here, so I anticipate a brisk demand shortly. Best to be ready for these things. That's a good thought process to have, I suppose. <laughs> Having lots of dead clowns lying around, rotting on the property is unpleasant, not to mention unsanctuary. Unsan Get them underground plantoers on matter here at the happy absent absidence pit park. You're wondering privately whether a little class solidarity could it be extended to purple heads, remembering your dear friend Kokoro Pleratot when Frazier seems to give a jump. No, that not uh, no, that's not ghosts. Gra grateful for an excuse to stop digging, you turn to look in the direction Frostra is staring, leaning your soil penetration lance. You don't see anything but fog. You ask what, I what is not ghosts. Um, yeah, it'd be good to know what I'm supposed to be looking at. Nothing is... I'm a dialectical materialist, and if any ghosts come around the happy absent pits, they should be aware that I won't believe in them, so they might as well go somewhere else. That is... Very much true that you can't see anything but foggy darkness and humped piddled ground, where you now guess piles of coletarian exoskeletons are buried in the coal pits. You don't see any ghosts because there's no such things. But the past few nights, I thought I saw beams of light shining up out of the ground. Almost as if, metaphorically, of course, some of the exoskeletons in the culprits had gotten hold of some flashlights and they were shining them up through the chinks in the soil. Look, there it is again. Oh, that is really interesting, actually. But this time you see it. A column of light that flashed up through the fog and it's gone, seemingly to come up from a crack in the ground, which it briefly illuminates in a blinding white. Fascinated, you move toward the crack. Which is now dark and invisible again. What are you doing? You look at Frozer in surprise. He seems terrified. You ask tactfully whether he doesn't think you ought to see what it is. For example, it could be some infrastructure malfunction that could be below the happy absent pit park and all of its inhabitants, living and dead, sky high. You're not even sure they have infrastructure in that area, but one can't be too careful. Uh. Well, maybe you're right. We are fearless revolutionary cadrads, after all. You can hear his teeth chattering. Not a good sign. You move toward where you think the flash came from. Browser closes behind you, peering over your shoulder. You can't help wondering where he'll be when the vanguard of his revolution is braving hails of bullets. You very much hope that his revolution, if it ever comes, won't happen while you're around. Just then, a whole series of little lights flash silently up from the ground, making columns through the fog. Falls behind you. Non existence. You tell them that there's undoubtedly a logical explanation. Exactly, logical. Though you have to admit that you have a weird feeling just now when the lights appeared like momentary distance or feeling of discontinuity, which can also be true. But you are feeling more curious now than ever. Murmuring comforting things to Frozier, you start digging right around the lights where you just saw it came from. Then it's weird because you break through some sort of thin crust, just as the soil in that particular place is just a few inches 
thick over a br brittle surface that your shovel goes right through like an old pottery. You wonder whenever you're inadvertently dug into an old coal pit. But what would the bright light be doing coming out of an old coal pit? That is a very interesting question, after all. So, and in some weird way, it doesn't feel like a coal pit. It feels like something metaphysical, like a re reality itself is particularly thin right in that spot. And you've broken through that very fabric of it with the soil penetration lance. You dig around the edges of the hole, enlarging it until you it's about a foot wide. The darkness within makes the darkness of the arterial night seem bright by comparison. It's so dark that the sorrow falling through it and the part of your sorrow penetration lines poking into it seem to vanish completely, as if the other side of the whole of reality gives up. That does not sound like a safe thing to go into. I don't know why you're continuing to poke at it. You and Forrester stare curiously down into the hole. Suddenly, a blinding light but straight blank light bursts out of the hole and into your faces. At the same time, there's a deafening sound which seems to vibrate the very frame like a gigantic needle scratching a gigantic record. <laughs> You're standing in the foggy night holding a sorry penetration lens that's been handed to you by Forger Rose. He points to where you've just been digging and you begin to dig in the same place. Oh no, it's a time loop! Oh no! The moss that covers the ground is tough leather and arterial so is rocky hard and and, rocky and unforgiving. No surprise there. And before long, you're studying profusely. Feel strange, like you were just standing somewhere else, doing something else, seeing something else. That no, not, not a time loop. The after images of blinding light and deafening sound seem to linger in your eyes, ears, but around you is nothing but dark fog and bare ground humped and pitted. You must have had a dizzy spell. Shake it off and begin retubing the soil. No exertion is too great for the pursuit of friendship, after all. Uh, Frosier watches you with satisfaction. Honest work is a wonderful thing. All hail the old regime, eh? You look like a walking cheese, but your muscular development is oppressive. What do you think of our planet? What has you been your impression of your visits? So I said, if you're supposed to know worse than a lot of places, some good and some bad. So yes, it's only polite to say nice things about your host planet. Besides, meeting Frozy has stoked you to decide for some free friendship. So a little plays and flattery often goes along with you. So you, with little breath you have to spare from you digging, you tell Frozy that you found a terror most interesting. The fierce rush of life here induces a salty wakeness. Wakefulness and boredom is virtually unknown. So, a very similar conversation to what we had before. The social structure arising from the hemo spectrum and multi dimensional relationship matrix is very unusual, producing a fascinating array of possible interactions among people. You're looking forward to the day you can tell your grandchildren about it. As you're speaking, a satisfied smile is over overspreads Frozier's face. I'm glad you recognize the nobility of our ancient society with its orderly. A Hierarchy and natural evolved degrees of privilege reflecting naturally evolved degrees of ability. You're you're pleased that your words have met with approval, but you're still your words leave you a little troubled. You have an odd deja vu sensation that this whole exchange could have gone quite differently. Maybe it even did go quite di quite differently sometime in the past or in some parallel universe. You inquire timidly whether the total domination of the lower bloods but the higher on Ateria doesn't sometimes feel like oppression. Never! I, myself, am only a rush blood, so I lack the privileges of the higher bloods. But the most important thing for a society is that everyone should be in their appointed place and do the things they're suited for. Oh, no. If all the passengers in the robot keep their seats and row in the same direction, the boat will quickly reach its destination. But if the passengers all jump up and start running around and grabbing the other's oars, the boat will capsize and all will be lost. You remark dip diplomatically that Atieri isn't a robot rolling toward a destination. You're wrong. planet is much like a robot advancing through the back waters of space, and as for our destination, all of us on Atieri aim at but a single goal every hour of every day to serve her most in 
high imperial condescendence in conquering her glorious galaxy-wide empire. Long live the Empress. Well, he suppose this sense of being part of something larger than yourself makes up for a loss. And... It does. And naturally, evolved systems are almost always more robust than artificially designed ones. They are. And it's true that Ateria's social structure does bring some semblance of order to a collection of 12 dis 12 despaired 12 subtypes. So, wait, okay, rust, uh, bronze, gold, shade, olive, a teal, cerulean, indigo, fuchsia, and purple. I don't know what the la- oh, the mutant bloods, and... What is the last one? I don't know what the last one is. It is. Brush your beams at you fondly. There is nothing warm than a heart than the heart of someone, like like someone who thinks you are right about everything. It's so wonderful to find someone, even s someone who looks like a piece of cheese, who is so intellectual and understands society and politics so perfectly. Family, a true friends. Victory. Sure. It's by far the worst place you've ever heard of, which is very much true. The feeling comes over you suddenly that nothing can be more important than the truth. The truth is at the foundation of all real friendship, so... Truth sets you free. Honesty is the best policy. You take, you, so you take a deep breath and say that you hope you won't give offense, but your opinion of Aferia is the nastiest, ugliest, cruelest, and inhospitable and most unfair place you have ever seen or heard of in a long time. Long life of travel and study. Even the plants are bloodthirsty. Even the soil is hard and mean. You've made so many, so many or no friends here, but you've heard it's possible to make friends with lions, barrows, killer whales, and other wild and dangerous creatures. In fact, sometimes here on Ontario, you felt that you've been locked into a cage with a bunch of such wild and dangerous creatures. Know that you could have anticipated that blunt honesty like that would give offense, and indeed, it seems to have done so. As you finish your remarks, Frosia is frowning darkly. Uh, <laughs> so you come to Adera as an uninviting guest only to criticize and judge our civilization, eh? No, no. Uh, you know enough about our society, our billions of years of evolution, and our painstaking rise from mud dwelling and sexual ancestors and political and sociological theories of our spe statesmen, philosophers, and scientists to make those judgments, do you? Well. Uh, I knew this was not going to go well based on the other response. No doubt you've done your studies establishing what would happen if the handless structure groups are placed in different relations to one another. For example, rush bloods were the highest group and fuchsia bloods were the lowest. Oh no, but... It is a similar to Arteria that you have a firm basis on which to apply your pre preconceptions to us. Not at all, but... And surely you aliens are similar enough to... Enough biologically and psychologically to troll us to know how we feel about our own society. Um, I thought not. I guess from the very fir from the first, from the very first that you were nothing but a dejectical fox, a socialist, pseudo intellectual, spouting your ivory theories without the least idea of what you are talking about. Oh, uh, I'm not surprised. Well, smarty pants alien, I suggest you take your cheese like person and your theories home to your own planet. Won't be long before her most and high and purely condescendence conquers your arms of the galaxy so that we Italians can return the favor by standing in judgment over your society and politics. In the meantime, I bid you a good sedrum. And with that, Fazio Avelio seizes his soil. Uh, Petrician lands as well as your hopes and dreams and stalks off into the foggy nights. Game over. And with that, I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. May the stars forever guide your path, wherever it might lead you into the future. Bye bye.